It's always a good morning if you're healthy. Have a carrot. Thank you, Mr. Gerard. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Terhoff. It's always a good morning if you're healthy. Have a carrot. Thank you. Thank you. Have one. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Terhoff, would you please give me an okay on this? What's the matter with you lens gremlins? These pictures are about as exciting as a house organ for a funeral parlor. But, Larry, this week nothing happened. No murders, no accidents, nobody even fell down in a bathtub. Maybe nobody took a bath. That's malarkey. When I was hustling a camera, the boss, old muscle bustle, scram. Uh, Mr. Tarlock, this is a delicious carrot. May I have another one to take home with me? Why, certainly, certainly. Good morning, Mr. Turlock. Good morning. You'll, uh, you'll excuse me if I finish this, won't you? Keep your back straight, like this. Oh, yes, sir. Back straight, yes, sir. Well, how did you like this week's magazine? Swell cover, huh? Excellent. Fine picture. Stiff knees. Stiff knees, yes. Joe Jackson shot that. Good man. Only one thing about it, I've checked the police. No record of such an occurrence. I trust for your sake there was no tampering with the truth. Why, Mr. Turlock, are you accusing me of faking a picture? Me, the editor of Flick? Just want to be sure. Well. I'm glad you liked the issue. I didn't say I liked the issue. That picture on the cover was the only good one. We need some fresh blood, some new blood around here. A good photographers are hard to find, sir. Not if you keep your eyes open. Take a look at this. Picture by Pat Marvin, Iowa Daily Bugle. A man who takes a picture like that should be working for me, and men who don't know that shouldn't. Now, that's well spoken, Mr. Turlock. You know, the minute I saw this picture in an early morning edition, I wired Marvin an offer. <laughs> well, maybe you're smarter than I thought. I'm going to the gym. Want to step a few rounds? <laughs> Better harden that up. Well, I'd like to, sir, but there's some work here that won't wait. <laughs> I'm glad it isn't a fake. Send in Joe Jackson and bring your book. Get a hold of Jackson? He'll be right in. If I eat any more carrots, magicians will be taking me out of hats. Take a wire. Did you want to see me, Larry? Yeah, Joe, come in. Sit down. You and me, we've sort of been through the mill together, haven't we, Joe? <laughs> Say we have, Larry, sure. Yes. And I've always been for you 100%, haven't I, Joe? That's right, Larry, 100%. Yeah. What's the idea of pulling this on me? This? Well, what do you mean? Don't you think I know a fake picture when I see one? I didn't just drive up in a load of squash, you know. Okay, Larry. But you expected me to come up with something, so I came up with something. It was good enough for the cover, wasn't it? I'm no fiddle flap, Joe. I don't follow you guys around, and I don't go over your swindle sheets with a magnifying glass. But there's one thing I won't stand for. That's one of my men faking a picture on me. Oh, Larry, now that... So long, Joe. Pick up your check from Hazen. See you around sometime. I was getting awfully fed up with those carrots. Take a wire. No muscle bustle's got a new protege. Yeah? Who is it this time? Oh, some goof from the corn country. Send the wire to Pat Marvin, Iowa Daily Bugle, Council Point, Iowa. Have they been in long enough, Pat? Well, I think we can leave them in a few more minutes. Uh, oh, no, Ben. Then you know, just because I'm in your kitchen, that's no reason to take advantage. Gee, Pat, I wish you'd stay here for always. <laughs> Where in the kitchen? Oh, you know what I mean. I'll get it. Hey, I banged on that front door till I ain't got no knuckles left. What you doing back here? Never mind. And who's the telegram for? Pat Marvel. Your old lady told me you was here. Hey, what's burning? Oh, whoa. Oh. They're a little stiff, but they'll be all right. Cooking pictures? Who gave you that recipe? When are you two going to get married? Why don't you ask her? What's the matter? Are you scared to ask her? Oh. Oh, Ben. Ben, look. Look oh. at this. Oh, wait a minute. Outside. Outside. Now, what's all the excitement oh, about? You, you remember the airplane picture? Yeah. Well, I just 
got an offer for a job from New York, Flick magazine. She offered you an offer? I mean, offered you a job, Flick? Oh, yes. Oh, Ben, isn't it wonderful? You know how I wanted this. Yeah. Haven't you forgotten something? What? The airplane picture. That was a fake. Oh, I just ben. duped in the background for you for a gag, just to make it look like it was crashing. Oh, well, I'm still a good photographer anyway. What does it matter how I got the job? I'll hold on to it, and on the level, too. Well, what's the matter, Ben? Don't you think I can? Yeah, that's the trouble. I do. Oh, Ben. It isn't because I'm not fond of you. You know that, but... Well, I've just got to have a try at it, that's all. If I don't, I'll turn into one of those women who keep talking about what a great career they would have had if they hadn't gotten married. I'll get fat and sour Not and... sour. Oh, Ben, I've just got to have a crack at New York. Okay, Pat. You take a crack at it. I'll stay here and keep the oven hot. Oh, Ben. Well, if I'm leaving tonight, I, I have a lot of things to do. Oh. oh, Ben, you're sweet. I get kissed more on the cheek. Yeah? Pat Marvin is here. Who? Pat Marvin is here. Oh, send him in. Mr. Burke? Yeah? I'm Pat Marvin. Oh, come in. Pat Marvin? Yes. Well, won't you, uh, won't you sit down, Miss Marvin? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, so, uh, so you're Pat Marvin. <laughs> well, what do you know? Pat Marvin. Well, yes. Is, is there anything so miraculous about that? Well, no, but to tell you the truth, I expect you to look a little different. Yes, uh, quite a little different. <laughs> well, I'm sorry not to live up to your expectations. Oh, not at all, Miss Marvin. It, uh, it is Miss, isn't it? Yes, it's Miss. Fine. You know, the minute I saw a picture of that plane crash in the paper, I said to myself, now there's a guy, a gal with plenty of moxie, who deserves a break in the big time. That's what I said to myself. And uh, I thought I was the guy who could give it to her. But uh, <laughs> now I'm not so sure. Well, what do you mean? Well, you're pretty young. I, I mean, you're pretty and young. But I can see you've got a lot to learn. And if there's anybody who can teach you, it's, <laughs> it's me. Oh, well, I uh, don't want to cause you too much trouble. Oh, not at all. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is give you the benefit of my experience. You fall in front of you every day. You've got to hustle your own shots. Sometimes you've got to put your foot in the door and keep it there, no matter how hard it's stamped on. Of course, uh, that's all right for a number 10 like mine, but uh, yours... Uh... Oh. <laughs> in order to cut the mustard, you've got to have glove. Glove? Mm-hmm. Oh. No woman could possibly have it. Well, it sounds like a goldfish could have it. <laughs> what is it? Well, glove's a combination of the four things you've got to be to get ahead in this business. You've got to be a go-getter, you've got to be lucky, you've got to be up and at em, and a bunco artist at heart. G-L-U-B. Glove. Oh. <laughs> that's Uncle Larry's formula for success. Well, who's your expensive-looking friend? That's Dolores Latour, formerly Schultz, refugee from the chorus. She's now the sixth wife of Sonny Tucker. Oh, is that Sonny Tucker? Yes, the girl happy millionaire. But, honey, I have a very simple explanation. I'm not interested in any of your explanations. He's trying to beat Tommy Manville's record at the altar. Oh. Well, they certainly look like they're getting on each other's nerves. Well, naturally. They've been married almost a couple of months now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to dance? Well, will you give me a few minutes for repairs? I'm getting that Airedale look. <laughs> what kind of a scene are you figuring on this time? Hysterics or just uh, throwing things? It'll be one you'll never forget. Just took poison what? in there. Yes, poison, and not one of your martinis. Please, not so loud. We'll take care of it quietly. 
There is a doctor in the hotel next door. I want to get something out of my coat, please. Thank you. What are you thinking about? Oh, I... I was just thinking how wonderful it is of a great, big, important man like you to take so much time teaching me the ropes. I, um... Uh, I don't guess you'd like to stop off at my place and have a nightcap. No, I guess not. Uh, uh, <laughs> Catching cold? I think it's the change of climate. Oh, yeah. I suppose you have a boyfriend back home. Mm-hmm. Engaged? Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You're going to sort of have to have someone look after you. You know, a young girl kicking around New York alone is liable to run into a lot of wolves. Especially an attractive girl like you. You're 100% right about that, Mac. It's something awful. Okay, Mac. <laughs> well, it's been a wonderful evening, Mr. Burke. Uh, the, uh, the first name is Larry. Larry. Uh, see you tomorrow? Oh, uh, I wonder if you'd mind if I used your telephone. I, uh, I'm supposed to check with the night boy. Oh. No, no, I, I wouldn't mind at all. Except that it might disturb... Ben. Ben? Yes, Ben, my, my, my brother. Oh. Yes, he's, uh, he's sleeping on the day bed in the, in the living room next to the phone. Say, you, uh, you didn't tell me you had a brother, will you? Oh, didn't I? No. No, what, what's he doing here? Well, he's, uh, he's sleeping on the day bed in the living room next to the telephone. No, I, I mean, does he work here in New York? Oh, no, no, he doesn't. He, uh, he just came along to see that everything was all right, you know. I see. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, he thinks I was working tonight. You know, if he ever thought for a minute that I was out with a, with a strange man unchaperoned, why he... Well, I'll be... Unchaperoned? You mean you actually do that sort well, of thing? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I better wait. hours. Here you were in the same nightclub with this Dolores dame. She tries to bump herself off and you don't even get a sniff at it. It just proves it. Women have no place in a job like this. They just haven't got grub. Oh, I suppose I should have guessed what she was going to do. Guessed it, smelled it, used a Ouija board. At least come up with something. Oh, well, you must mean something like this. Yes, I must mean something. Wait a minute, where'd you get... Where did you... Glub. Darling, what a shot. Oh, I love you. Oh, no. Oh. Well, what are you doing? Get out of the way. Ow! Come on. Wait. Now breathe. Wait. Just breathe. Come on. Well, Mr. Turlock. <laughs> How's it going? Fine, fine. Push-ups. That's what you need. Push-ups. Yes, sir. Oh, this is Pat Marvin, our new photographer, Mr. Turlock. How do you do? Can I... Can I stop breathing now? I'm breaking her in the Turlock way. She made those wonderful pictures of the airplane crash. I know, I know. That's why I told you to hire her. Only I didn't know he was a herd. Well, how are you, young woman? How's it, uh, Bowman? Uh, a little flabby, soft. Uh, can you touch the floor? Uh, mm -hmm. Touch the floor. Oh. Touch the floor for Mr. Turlock. Well, I... No, 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 no. Stiff knees, like this. Now. Uh, could you please? Stiff, stiff knees. Yes, yeah, stiff knees. Oh. Uh, something snapped. You're a little stiff. Have a carrot. 
I was just complimenting Miss Marvin on the neat job she did last night. Dolores Tucker, right after she'd taken poison. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Why don't you go over to Tucker's apartment and get some shots of him and that fantastic love nest of his? We'll use it next week for a featured layout. Uh, Smitty will give you the address. <laughs> Beat it before old Muscle Bustle gives you the complete workout. He insists on all employees following the Turlock diet and exercise course. Thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Turlock. It was nice meeting you. Sorry, Mr. Turlock, but we have to strike while the iron's hot, you know. This press always makes me feel like exercise. Oh, me too. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. Ready, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Come on, let's be. Mr. Tucker is not seeing any newspaper person. He isn't. Come so on, he's got a right. Come on, Can you please tell Mr. Tucker bubbles is here? Oh, please, 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 please. He's expecting me. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, yes, yes. Beg pardon, sir, but there's a Miss Bubbles to see you, sir. Well, sure in. Miss Don't Bubbles. stand there jumping up and down like a yo-yo. Sit down, Bubbles. Oh, but uh, I'm, I'm not really Bubbles. Uh, I'm a photographer from Flick magazine. A trick chick from Flick. Help yourself. Uh, I'd pour it for you, but uh, look. You mean you're not, you're not really angry because I'm a photographer? There's nothing wrong with working. My grandfather did. Oh, well, uh, well then you won't mind if I just take a few pictures, will you? Fire away, Bubbles. All right. You just stay that way. Keep the glass in your hand. That's right. Have you any pictures of your wife, Ron? Which one? The last one, Dolores. Well, there should be one of her in here. Mm. Yes. No, that's Suzette. Mm. I wonder whatever happened to her. Which one was she? Uh, second. Uh, no, third, I think. Yes, third. That was the year I had her and the measles. Mm. Oh, here's dear little Dolores. Mm. You hold this. Right back a little. How is she? Very affectionate in a revolting sort of way. Uh, no, I didn't mean... I mean, how is she after her experience last night? Oh, that. Oh, she'll be all right. A few days in the hospital. I think she dilutes her poison. Oh, really? Seventh time. It'd be cheaper if I got her dress with a built-in stomach pump. Well, um, what was the fight about last night? Oh, same thing. Every time I go out with another girl, she gets jealous. Unreasonable woman. Why did you try to commit suicide? What are you going to do now? Are you going to get a divorce? There'll be no divorce. No divorce? There was a little misunderstanding, but it's all made up now. You can say for me that we're very, very happy. Why don't you give us the lowdown on the stand? Let him see your husband. Stand up staring at me. Please, please. No, ma'am. Uh, shall I announce you? My own house? You crazy? Yes, ma'am. Well. Here we well, go. Well, I'm at death door. You're carrying on. This you is Bubbles. Pig. She takes pictures. You dog! You hyena! And this is Dolores. She throws high into the right. As for you... Now, look, Mrs. Tucker, I... Really, you have this all wrong. Huh? When I get through with you, nobody will look at you. Not even here. But I'm only here on business. What kind of business? Yeah. Now I've got you. Look. We'll call this Flick Goes to the Tuckers. Or How to Duck in Six Easy Lessons. <laughs> it's a swell job, Pat. And I thought your foot was too small to get inside a door. Oh, I didn't use my foot. I used my head. Mm. And a very pretty head it is, too. <laughs> well, I'll uh, get this over to the art department and have it captioned. Oh, swell. Uh, tell the cashier to give you a $50 bonus. <gasps> well, thank you. <laughs> I'll bet your brother will be pleased. He certainly will. You want to send him some prints? Oh, I won't have to. He's, he's still here. Oh. Well, um, if he uh, has any trouble getting his ticket back, maybe I can help. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, I'll have to know a little in advance. I mean, it's rather difficult to get, you know. And uh, When is he planning on leaving? Oh, uh, he hasn't decided. Oh, he hasn't decided.
Hello, Pat. Ben. Oh, oh Ben, it's, it's good to see you. Surprised? I should say I am. What are you doing in New York? Well, the minute you left, the old town wasn't the same. Oh, Ben. Anyway, I thought it over. You're gonna need someone around here to look after you. A girl kicking around New York by herself is liable to run into a lot of wolves. Oh, well, then that's, that's very sweet of you. What are you gonna do? Oh, I don't know. Oh, for one thing, I can help you if you get stuck for shots. You know, rig up a few good ones now and then. Oh, no. No, Ben. This is the big league, and I want to be completely on the level. And besides, my boss wouldn't stand for any fake shots. Why, he just tossed me right out. People buy magazines to see interesting and exciting pictures. If I can help you get some really good... Oh, Pat, I... Oh. oh this is... This is... My boss, Mr. Burke. Well, how do you do? I'm Ben. Ben, you know. Oh, it's ben. ben. Well, this is a pleasure. Pat's talked a lot about you. She has. Oh, you bet. As a matter of fact, you're all she talks about. Well. Yes, that's right. I've never met a girl who talks so much about him. Larry, uh, you wanted to see me, didn't you? Ben won't mind oh, waiting. Really, it, he it won't. really isn't that important. Uh, I was hoping I'd meet you before you left. Before I left, but I, I How's just... about a little party tonight? Have you got time? Well, sure, I've got time. Well, that's fine. We'll make up a little foursome. <sighs> uh, know any numbers in New York? Number. Oh, you mean girls? Yeah, uh, just Pat. But you do, don't you? You live here, after all. Oh, sure. Which do you prefer, blondes, brunettes, or redheads? Oh, I don't see what difference it makes which I prefer. Now, that's what I like, an open mind. You leave everything to me. Pat, you should have brought your brother in sooner. He's a nice guy. See you later, Ben. Larry, I... Hey, what was he talking about? He said I was your brother. Did you tell him I was your brother? No, Ben. I didn't tell him you were my brother. I just said I had a brother named Ben. But you haven't any brother named anything. I know it. But, well, why'd you say you did then? What's going on around here? Well, Ben, I... I thought it would be safe. Well, I thought it would be safe, a girl in New York, if, if they knew that in the other room there was a big brother lurking around. If who knew? Well, if they... Anybody. Him? Has he been annoying you? No, of course not. Oh, Ben, stop quibbling. I'm caught nibbling. I mean, I'm not quibbling. I had to say something, and your name just popped out. Well, if you had to say something, why didn't you say I was your fellow? Because you're not. Well, we were not engaged. Well, I'm not your brother, either. At least then, when they met me, they wouldn't think... Hey, he thinks he's taking you out tonight. Well, what? difference does it make? We're all going to be together. It makes a lot of difference. I'm going to put a stop to this right oh, now. Oh, now, Ben, wait. Wait nothing. Listen, think of my job. What's your job got to do with it? Do you have to go out with him to work for him? Is he that kind of a worm? No, he's not that kind of a worm. Well, then. Oh, Ben. Look, I lied to him. I lied to him. Now, think how you'd feel. I am. Oh, why did you come here at all? Well, it looks like it's about time I did. All right, Ben. All right, Ben. I... Go on. Tell him. Only if I get fired, I'll never talk to you again as long as I live. Oh, no, Pat. No, I mean it. I mean it. Go on. Tell him. You're, you're sure it's your job you're worried about, not him? Well, if it was him, he, do you think I would have made it up in the first place? I don't know. This thing's got me all woozly. All right, Ben. Look, we've got to find you someplace to stay. We'd better get a room where I live. Come on. Here you are, Smitty. Thank you. I'll pick you up about eight. <laughs> nice to see a brother and sister so happy. Sorry, everything is reserved. Don't worry, honey child, we'll get here. You can get me a tip. Put it away, it will only snag up my income tax. <laughs> Good evening, Carol. <laughs> Hello, George, big night, huh? Same thing, too many people with too much letters. <laughs> oh, Henry!
Well, what do you have? Stinger. It's a cocktail. Drink, you know. Oh, oh, oh. How about I'd you? I'd like some sherry. Some actually. sherry? Mm -hmm. I'll see uh, two stingers and a glass of sherry. And uh, how about you, Ben? Uh, have you any vegetable juice? <laughs> you and Turlock would get along very well. Oh. <laughs> well, I've been taking his correspondence course of exercises for years. Has he sent you the muscles yet? <laughs> <laughs> two stingers, one sherry, and one uh, vegetable uh, cocktail. Yes. Cigarette? Thank you. You couldn't loan me a Boy Scout and a couple of sticks, could you? Oh, oh. Would you like to dance? I doubt if there are any suicides going on tonight. Excuse me. Thanks. Don't you believe in it, or is this uh, Dance This Tuesday? Oh, I don't waltz or one step. This isn't a waltz or one step, is it? No, but I appreciate your frankness. You've no idea how a good heart-to-heart -heart talk about dancing saves a girl's shoes. Ben doesn't seem to care much for that date I got him. You know, she's a powers girl and one of the most popular gals in town. He doesn't seem to give her a tumble. I don't mean to pry, but have you read any good books lately? Huh? Why didn't you just stay at home and send me a nice bottle of plasma? Oh, sorry, my mind was wandering. Lucky for you, it can travel half fair. I was wondering where she learned to rumba. We never rumbled at home. Would you like to join them? You could make it ring around the rosy. Oh, oh, Ben, you ought to learn how to run, but it's fun. Where did you learn? Oh, it's easy, Ben. All you have to do is swing your rear turret and pretend you're scraping chewing gum off your feet. That's all. <laughs> well, here's to a pleasant trip home. Trip? Didn't Pat tell you? No, oh, what? I'm not going home. Oh, well, <laughs> that's just standing. I decided to stick around and see what New York has to offer that Iowa hasn't. How about a job with your outfit? For years, my hobby's been photography, you know, developing and printing. Well, I'd like to, Ben, but there's a great difference between a hobby and a profession, you know. But my work's professional, isn't it, Pat? Ask Pat, she'll tell you. He's very good. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I guess I can find a spot for you. Thanks, pal. And now, uh, how about a waltz with your big brother? Oh, I'd love it. Wait till the aunts and uncles arrive next week. You'll have quite a staff. You want to sit here and be sarcastic, or would you rather dance? I'll bet they have a lot of unemployed cousins, too. Come here. Of all the dirty, underhanded tricks, taking advantage of me that way. Well, I'm doing it for you. I think you're infatuated with that fellow. I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Is that why you made me up? That had nothing to do with it. That's completely different. You can't get rid of a brother that easily. Oh, the whole situation is completely ridiculous. All you have to do is tell him I'm not your brother. Ben, come on, let's dance. They'll be wondering what happened to us. Come on. Pardon, old sock. May I cut in? Hello there, Bubbles. Oh, Mr. Tucker, uh, this is Mr. Uh, my brother. Thanks, old sock. Let's try it, Bubbles. But I tell you, my name isn't Bubbles. What's in a name? Almost all the women I know are named Mrs. Tucker. It's a pleasure to meet one who isn't. <laughs> I see your point. Wait. There's a big black cat tearing around in my head. Has to have a drink to quiet him. Come on, have something. Thirsty again, Mr. Tucker? Off and right, the usual, please. Well, um, where is Mrs. Tucker this evening? Shh. I'll tell you a little secret. We have. Oh, well, uh, I can't say I'm surprised. Bubbles, you're beautiful. Will you marry me? As oh. soon as I get my divorce, I mean. Oh, but this is so sudden. All my proposals are. I see a woman, I go for her, I propose. You certainly do. It wouldn't be such a bad deal. Lots of laughs, plenty of champagne, and the usual $100,000 alimony. <laughs> well, don't tell me we've already. I am leaving tomorrow for Reno to divorce Dolores. Uh, you can use my apartment while I'm gone. Have it redecorated if you like. Most of them do. <sighs> I believe you're serious. Of course I am. Here's the key. What do you say? Oh, I say I've got to get back to my party. Oh, here, try it on for size. Oh, now look, fun is fun. Well, I 
to follow you when I find you again. You can't steal my husband and get away with it. Oh, lady, couldn't we talk this over in some nice public place like Madison Square Garden? We're going to stay right here. We're not going to talk either. You are. I'll scratch your eyes out. Now look, you're asking oh, for it. Don't let me go. Please, I'm ready. You want to stand in the men and your wife like this? Would you boys like a steady job? <laughs> Let's get out of here before that female tornado breaks loose again. Uh, Mavis lives the other way. You'll have to take a different cab. Good night. Uh, Madison 59. Flatbush and Hennessy. Is that far? It's Brooklyn, but I have my piggy bank with me. Oh. I was so embarrassed in all my life. Oh, you don't really belong to cafe society until you've had at least one public brawl. Forget it. <laughs> well, well, what's so funny? Here I am trying to make a good impression on your brother. I wonder what he thought. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Larry's quite a ladies' man. Quite. Probably makes love to every girl he goes out with? Probably. I imagine a smart fellow like him has quite a smooth line. Quite. Oh, but I don't guess girls fall for that kind of stuff. Do they? Are you kidding? You mean they do? What is this? Information, please. Uh, a driver, stop the cab. I just remembered. I I've got to have my appendix out. I've got a cavity in it. Uh, here, take her to Hatbush and Flannessy, and, and good night. And then, may I do have glad you. Come on, stop it. Hey, Butch, what are you doing tonight? Oh, Larry, it's been such an exciting evening. Yeah. Is it all over? Well, I... I can't think of anything else that could happen. I can. Good night, Larry. Gee, Pat, I feel as if... Yes, yes, Larry. I feel like... Hello. Hello, I made it. Sorry we can't ask you in, but tomorrow's a working day. Good night, old man. Good night. Drinker. Uh, come on, sis. The magazine that's there when it happens. What's that? Your cat just gave birth to 12 kittens and you thought we might like to have a picture of them? I'm sorry, lady. No. Now, if you would answer. Good morning, Smitty. Good morning. Good morning, Smitty. You too? This is Mr. Uh, my brother, Ben. This is Miss Smith. Smitty to the office. Hello. How do you do? Will you tell Mr. Burke he's here? Hey, is she always like that in the morning? Oh, I wouldn't... Oh, yes, yes, she's always cheerful. Such a sweet surprise. Well, I'm glad you liked them. There's a little speech that goes with them. Is it as pretty as the flowers? Well, I doubt it. I'm not very good at speech making, especially serious ones. Larry, I... Now, now, don't try to stop me. I've been up all night rehearsing. No, Larry, I've, I've got to tell you something. It's about Ben. Yes, I know. He doesn't like me. 
No, no, it isn't that. I've it's tried just my that... best. I got him a date, got him a job. I don't know what else I can do. Uh, well, Larry, it isn't, it isn't anything that you have to do. It... Oh, everything's mixed up and it's all my fault. Oh, don't be upset, Pat. Maybe it's a good sign. Maybe you wouldn't be upset if you didn't like me. No, Larry, please let me tell you about it. I... Oh, here comes that dehydrated Hercules. Morning, morning. Good morning, Mr. I was hoping I'd find you in, Miss Marvin. I'd like to put you on the Mystery of the Week next issue. Need some sparking up. Mystery? Yes, it's a series we're running. A murder story in a page of photos. You know, the crime and the victim and the clues. Can you solve this murder? If not, turn to page 63. Yeah, think of a good one. Maybe your brother could help you. I put a brother on, Mr. Turlock. Great technician, great. Fine, I'd like a girl to have a brother. Have you been taking your exercises? Oh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, no, uh, no carrots? Wednesday, turnips. Uh, well, it's been nice seeing you, Mr. Turlock. I'll see about that mystery. Chin up, chest out. You know that Navy deal we've been after? It came through. Authorization to send one of our men on a European convoy. They finally went for it, huh? Where there's a will, there's a way. That's what I always tell Mrs. Turlock. Yes, and what does Mrs. Turlock say to that? Nothing. We've been married 20 years. Keep this authorization. You won't get word till the last minute. I'll have one of our best men ready, packed, and waiting. Good, good. Here. Oh, thank you, sir. Let's see. First, we'll take the uh, masked lover. Oh. And then we'll take the husband. Yeah. And then the hand with the gun. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last shot will be the girl lying on the bed murdered. <laughs> It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Tell you what we can do. We can take the shots of the lover and the husband at the studio. Close shots. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but for the victim, we're going to need a really plushy background. Oh, sure. You know, something very exciting. Yeah. Say. Yep. Yeah, Ben, this is it. What? The key to Sonny Tucker's apartment. Come on, let's hurry up, because the crowd will be there soon. There must be dozens of keys out. Come on, let's go. Hello, Ben. Oh, say, thanks for the assignment. We're working on it right now. Oh, I, uh, I still have a little speech to make. Well, I have one, too. Uh, dinner tonight? Uh-huh. All right. Good. You mean somebody lives here? <laughs> sure, lots of people. Ooh, what a place for a murder. Well, imagine a guy giving out keys to this place. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you get started and I'll snoop around oh, a bit. Right. Ben! Yeah. Look, I hit the jackpot. Oh, you better leave those alone. Why? Why should I hire a model when these things are available? You go on and get set up. All right. Hello, big boy. Oh, oh madam, uh, I'm sorry, we... Holy mackerel, uh, holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let's see. If the camera is here... Yeah, yeah. And, uh... She is shot from... from here. No, no, from... From this window, and um, now, the murderer is here, and she walks towards the divan, he shoots her, bang! Oh, that's good, wait a minute. Take it before I suffocate. How'd they come out? Oh, fine. That one of you is a honey. Yeah. I'll get a print on it right away. Well, you better do a good job of it, Ben, because from tonight on, you're on your own, holding it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell him the truth about us. But you said you'd get fired if I told him. Maybe I will. Well... Well, there are worse things than getting fired, Ben. You didn't think so yesterday. Well, can't a woman change her mind? 
That's about all some women do. Are you nearly ready? We'll be in a jiffy. Why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Thanks. Well, what sort of a mystery did you cook up? Oh, the usual triangle, two men and a woman, you know. Yeah. What's the yarn? Well, I... I scribbled it there someplace. Oh, it's in my purse on the desk if you want to take a look at it. Find it? Yeah. How do you like it? It's an unusual twist at the end, don't you think? Right. <laughs> well, you don't sound very enthusiastic. I think it's great. You, you certainly had me fooled. Oh, you couldn't guess it, could you? No. Well, I just went along for the ride. Well, well, the ride's over. This is where I get off. Larry, what? Are you... I thought I was the boy with all the answers. Next to you, I'm Alice in Wonderland. You found out about Ben. I found out about a lot of things. Well, Larry, I was going to tell you about it myself. You know, when I made up that story about, about a brother, why well, I had no idea things would go this far. And, and then when Ben finally Oh, sure, show up, sure. It's nothing at all. You get yourself a job, count the boss along until he falls for you, move the boyfriend in, get him a job, too. Saves rent, car fare, and... Oh, Larry, surely you don't think that I I don't think I know. When I get through with that guy, it's going to take an assembly line to put him together. Get out. Get out! Well, Mr. Burke, I've been waiting for you. Where's Ben Marvin? In the dark room. Send him in to me. Uh, yes, sir. This just came and said to give it to you personally. See me? Yes, Ben. Come in. How are you feeling? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, that's great. Sit down, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Everything all right? Yes, yes. Have you uh, seen Pat? Oh, yes, yes. I saw Pat. Did you have a nice talk? Oh, sure. Why? Oh, nothing. I just wondered. So, Ben, I want you to do a little errand for me. That'll only take you a couple of hours. Well, I was just finishing those mystery shots for the deadline. Fine. I want you to do this specially for me. Oh. Uh, run down to the point of embarkation and see the public relations officer there. He'll tell you which ship and what to shoot. And uh, here's your identification card. Oh, thanks. You know you're a swell egg. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> Say, Ben, uh, you better hurry. You're due there in an hour. Oh, okay. And Ben? Yeah? Hurry back. Oh, I will. Ben, did he go on an assignment? Yeah. Well, he forgot his lenses. If he's gonna shoot anything... Oh, shove him in the lost and found. What? Shove him in the lost and found. He's on his way to Russia. Russia? Mm-hmm. But he doesn't know it. <laughs> hmm. Open, please. Click magazine, please. The new click, please. Click magazine. Wake up. An 
another day, another carrot. Mm. Hey, what on earth's the matter with you? Hey, where is he? Open the window, do something. Hurry up, don't just stand. And where have you been for the past two days? Now hold still, will you? I've been in a quiet little place, thinking. Thinking isn't the word for it, but it's close. Hey, um, what did you plant there? Petunias. Petunias, huh? That's nice. Oh. Thought you might like to look over this week's issue. Been out for quite some time now, almost as long as you have. I didn't know Kate this cover. Was this your idea? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> That's me. I posed for it myself. You mean this, this is a fake? Sure it is. We did it for the mystery. A pure 100% fake. I suppose that's your idea of revenge, putting a fake cover on a thing. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't my idea. But you know all about everything. Why don't you try to explain it to Turlock? Listen, I can't explain a thing like Hello? that to Turlock. Are you Pat Marvin? Mm-hmm, yep. How'd you get that picture of Dolores Tucker? No, that isn't a picture of Dolores Tucker. I posed for it myself. Yeah? I suppose you posed for this one, too. Oh. Well, well, it looks like, like the same picture, almost. It isn't. A police photographer took it an hour ago. Oh. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, you don't? How come you got a shot of this Dolores in your magazine when we didn't run on to the murder till this morning? Murder? Say, who's getting who around here? Bert, there's been a murder. Your photographer knew about it before we did. I want to know how she knew. But, Larry, this is fantastic. I'm surprised at you, officer. You know a good newspaper man never divulges the source of his information. Okay. Maybe she'll divulge at headquarters. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm not going to go... Minute. I think if I talk to her, maybe I can get her to cooperate with you. Okay. Five minutes. I'll be right here. Oh, now, look, Larry, Ben took this picture, and I'm going to have Ben tell him Wait about it. Wait a minute, it. Pat. Ben isn't here right now. I sent him on an assignment for a couple of days. Well, then I'll tell him myself. Pat, look, this is the chance of a lifetime. Figure it out. You and Ben took the picture. After you left, somebody bumped off DeLore's. The duplication in pose is either accidental or on purpose. I don't know. But if you tell the truth now, all we'll get out of it is being shown up as publishing a phony picture. Well, it won't be the first time. Now, that's not true. We've never stood for a fake picture since the magazine started. Oh, come on. Play along with this. We can go to town. Think of it. Flick photographer beats police to scene of crime. Refuses to divulge source of mysterious tip. Mm-hmm. Think of it. Flick photographer rots in jail. No, thank you, Larry. I'm going to tell him about oh, now it. Now, look, Pat. I'm not asking you to do this as a personal favor to me. It's just being loyal to the magazine you work for. Oh, no, Larry. I quit this morning. Oh, nonsense. We'll milk this thing for a couple of editions, and then, then we'll wash it all up. Oh, say you got a mysterious phone call or something. Mm, I don't know. Oh, I know you'll see it our way. Even if you despise me, remember, Turlock's been very nice to you. Oh, yes, he certainly has. Think of all the carrots he's given me free. <laughs> oh, that a girl. You'll never regret it. I'll get you out before you can say Jack Robinson. Jack Robinson. What? Well, now I've said it. Get me out of here. Oh, don't worry, Pat. They can't bluff us. Hello, Pat. Larry. Larry, how long is this going to go on? Page one, column one, not bad. You're going to get a $20 raise out of this. I just talked to Turlock. Yeah. I'll be the highest paid mug in the death house. Larry, I don't want a raise. I don't want publicity. All I want is to get out of here. Larry, all I want is to get out of here. Hey, you're scared. You're done right. I'm scared. Well, I'm scared to death. This thing has gone farther than I intended. But you got to trust me, Pat. I don't mean just about this. I've been through the ring of the last couple of weeks. Finding out about you and Ben was in jolt and... I said a lot of things I didn't really believe. I'm nuts about you, Pat. Larry. 
If only you could get me out of here, everything would be perfect. Okay. Sherlock will kill me, but I'll tell the DA the picture was a fake. That'll fix everything. I hate to admit it, but I had that picture faked. Miss Marvin posed for it herself. Just happened that when Dolores was killed, she fell in the same position. Rather coincidental, wasn't it? Oh, it doesn't make sense. If a woman kills another woman, she doesn't take a picture of her, let alone have it published. She might, because it sounds so insane, just to throw us off. That's psychological bunk. You've got no case and you know it. Oh, no? She and the murdered woman had two fights over Tucker. Item two. Tucker gave her a key to his apartment and then left for Reno. We verified that. Three, she went to the apartment, was trapped by Mrs. Tucker and killed her. But Miss Marvin knew that her fingerprints were all over the place. So she figured out this photographic angle as a cover-up. That's a ridiculous lie. Miss Marvin. It's a lie. I never killed her and I never took that photograph. Bring me some proof and I'll be glad to listen to you. Otherwise, she goes to trial for murder next Friday. Suppose I produce the man who shot that picture of Miss Marvin. We'll be glad to listen to his story and check it. I'll have him here before the trial. The matron is waiting outside for you, Miss Marvin. She'll take you back to your cell. Don't worry, Pat. We'll get Ben. I'll have Turlock move heaven and earth. And he can do it. I wonder what takes them so long. Maybe they don't know where his ship is. Oh, the Navy doesn't misplace the convoy. They send him out on it. All they have to do is send a radiogram and... Hello? What? Hello? Yes, this is Burke. Yes, I've got to know. Mr. Turlock has arranged to send a plane for him. He's wanted as a witness in a murder trial. The, the ship was torpedoed. Ben wasn't among the survivors. How ghastly. He's dead, Mr. Turlock. He's dead and I killed him. Oh, it wasn't your fault. You didn't know anything was going to happen to him. Oh, how am I going to tell Pat? That's not all. How are you going to get her out of this now? We've got to find the real murderer. Oh, that's great. What do we do, put an ad in the paper? Where do we start? First, you question the suspects. What suspects? Pat's the only one. Well, find some. Poor Ben. Oh, he wouldn't have wanted to go out any other way. He was doing his job. I wish I felt that way, Pat. Oh, Larry, it wasn't your fault. Well, you could have picked anyone else for the job, but, but you gave Ben the big assignment because you thought I was in love with him. You don't understand. Larry, it was a very unselfish thing you did for us. Ben's your only chance, Pat. Turlock says he's getting low and cold to handle your case. Of course, he's, he's never lost a client. <laughs> But there's always a first time for everybody, even Lowenthal. Oh, Pat, I've got to get him some ammunition. I've interviewed all of Tucker's previous wives, but I... Well, well, Larry, what are you going to do now? I've got a date with Tucker in an hour. Maybe he can give me a lead, I don't know. Oh, come on, darling. I love you. Rest your hips, Pips, in just a minute. Hello, Sonny. Hi, Bert. Rather pleasant the way you mourn. Oh, everybody knew Dolores and I had. I'm no hypocrite. What do you want to see me about? Did Dolores have any particular enemies? Plenty. They weren't particular. Yeah. For instance, oh, everybody, her masseuse, her couturier, even the kid that delivered the papers. They all hated her. No, no. I mean, uh, I mean somebody who hated her enough to kill her. I thought uh, Bubbles did. Well, we both know that Pat's getting a bad rap. I like that Bubbles, but that the picture of Dolores she took, the one on the cover. That wasn't Dolores. That was Pat. Awfully coincidental if it was. The same position as the way the police found her, even that one shoe off. The same negligee. Amazing if it wasn't Dolores. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. I wish I could help you, Bert. Well, thanks just the same. Call me anytime. Hey, say, do you want a gal? Can't make up my mind, kids. You two will have to toss for me.
The case comes up tomorrow, Burke. If you have anything to say, you can say it in court. When you see what I've got, it'll never get to court. No, it's new evidence. Well, all right then, listen. I want to arrange a little meeting between Miss Marvin and yourself for this afternoon at 2.30. No, 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 your office won't do. Sonny Tucker's apartment, the scene of the crime. Now, you arrange it with him. Yeah, okay, Mr. Merkel. Well, if this doesn't work, heaven help me. Help you? Heaven help Pat Marvin. Do you know what this is all about? If I find he's wasting my time, I'll have him jailed for... for... Withers. Well, I'll find something. Well, I'm glad you're all here. Hello, Pat. Hi, Burke. Is a bear with us? Oh, well, just a minute with us. Stick around. You may be of assistance to me. Come to the point, Burke. I'm a busy man. All right, Mr. Merkel. You were satisfied with your case, so I, I thought I'd do a little investigating on my own. And what did you find out? Nothing. Burke, if you brought me well, here... that is, my investigating brought me nothing except a slip of the tongue, which led me to further investigating. In our own photographic laboratory. Now, what do you think I found? Nothing. <laughs> no, I found, uh, this. Well, all I can see is a blurry picture of this room. That's right. Blurred picture of this room. Uh, that's why it was discarded. It was the last print on your roll, Pat. Oh, but Larry, there was As I say, it's a blurred picture of this room taken by Ben Scribner, the man who made the cover picture, Miss Marvin. The man who so conveniently disappeared. Well, not conveniently, Mr. Merkel. Rather tragically, I'd say. Of course, this meant nothing to me until I connected it with that slip of the tongue I mentioned. And it proved, uh... Well, oh, wait. Oh, Withers. Will you remove that picture from the wall, please, and uh, close those curtains? <laughs> Mr. Tucker. What does this mean? It means that Sonny Tucker hated his wife and wanted to divorce her. But unlike the others, Dolores refused to give him an easy divorce and take his money. So he pretended to go to Reno, doubled back and hid here in the apartment waiting for her. But Pat and Ben arrived first, so he... He hid over there. It's the butler's quarters, I think. And watched them shoot their pictures. This made it very convenient for him. When Dolores arrived, he killed her and put her body on the couch. So it would look like the picture of Pat, thereby pinning the murder on her. What have you to say, Tucker? You heard him. What gets me is, what did I say that gave him the lead? <laughs> well, last night in the bar, you said, what an amazing coincidence that the picture should be so similar to the position in which they found Dolores, even with one shoe off. Well? Well, in the picture of Pat on the cover of Flick, you couldn't see that one shoe was off. You could only see that from there. Larry, watch him. He may try to jump out. That only happens in movies, Bubbles. I have been using Winston for divorces. I wonder how he is on murders. You'll find out. Yes, but I still don't understand about that picture of Sonny Tucker. Now, I know there was no last print on that roll because we used it. I know. It was a fake. I duped it. But it worked. Oh, Larry, I could kiss you and... Uh, something more I've got to tell you. 
Right now, you think I'm a great guy. But when you hear what I've got to say, you'll go out that door and I'll never see you again. And I, I deserve it. Well, Larry, what is it? Well, it's Ben. I tricked him into going on that convoy. Because I was jealous. He didn't know that boat was going to sail. I killed him, Pat, just as if I'd shot him with a gun. So now you know. Oh, now, please Larry. don't say anything. I couldn't stand any more tonight. Just go. Ben! It's Ben! Oh, Ben, where have you been? You look wonderful in that cloth. Does he look wonderful? I just dropped you on the chair. Yes, now we're even. Oh, Ben, I'm glad to see you. Now you can tell me what you were going to before he... In, in front of Ben? Well, sure, he's got to know about oh, it, sir. Well, Ben, uh, Larry and I are good. Well, who's that? Oh, this is Natasha, my wife. She doesn't speak English. Your wife? Well, Ben, how did it happen? When? Where? 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 Well, after 20 rays on a dad, uh, I mean, 20 rays on a... 20 days on a ramp. Well... Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs>